The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Friday, February 17th, 2017. Hello everyone and welcome to a pre-recorded eBible Fellowship's questions and answers time. This program is designed to interact with you with your questions and comments related to the Bible and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And so, with our Bibles at the ready, it's now time to turn things over to our speaker for this pre-recorded questions and answers time, and say hello to Chris McCann. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Friday Night Question and Answer Program. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Bible with any questions or comments that anyone may have, and each person is invited to share what's ever on your mind by contacting us. And one of the ways that were mentioned at the beginning of the program, I will be glad to take your call. And I'll try to respond as much as possible by turning to the Bible, which is God's holy word. Well, we only have a short time together, so we're going to begin right away by going to the first person on the phone tonight. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. I ask you, um, the rule of the Bible, is that as accurate as the King James Version? The Blue Letter Bible, is that an online Bible? I don't know. Someone I know uh, said that she uh, goes to the, that Bible and she get reference from there sometimes. And I was just wondering, is it the same thing as the King James Version? Have well, you ever heard of it? Well, I, I've seen people post um, on Facebook scripture from the blue letter bible and and so i i think it is a a website that um that does have the king james because i've seen people post the king james but often with modern um sites like that they may have um several different versions and and allow the individual to choose their version um i I don't know. I, I really don't use it. I um, I don't uh, use that kind of. Well, I might copy and paste from some online Bible, um, mm -hmm. but but um, it, not the Blue Letter Bible. So I'm not familiar with that. Okay, and you, I don't use it either. I just wanted to know if you were familiar with it. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Friday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Um, I have a question in Matthew chapter 7, but before I ask the question, I just want to uh, let you know that um, somebody on your staff or somebody keeps skipping over my uh, Facebook questions on Wednesday. <clears throat> well, let me, let me respond to that because um, if you're posting into the Facebook question and answer group. I'm the one who who responds to them, and and sometimes if if someone posts into the group, I may not respond. Maybe that week, that Wednesday or Sunday, uh, because it could be a difficult question, and I'm I'm just taking more time to study, or sometimes. Uh, given a limited amount of time that that we open the group those two days a week on Wednesday and Sunday, sometimes if an individual has not posted or not posted that often and they post a question and then there's another individual who uh, who regularly posts, I may opt to respond to the person uh, who maybe is posting for the first time. So there, there's various reasons. I appreciate your patience and the patience of anyone who doesn't have their question responded to right away. Um, uh, and, and it's good if, if, it, if you see a question you posted maybe three, four weeks ago, you know, there's a lot of things being posted into the group. And so uh, it would be helpful if you found that question or reposted it or found the question you posted 
and then just type if um, if you type into the comments section um, please don't forget this question or what about this question it'll appear at the top of the group once again every time there's a recent comment that brings the item to the top of the group so so then it's visible once again um, I, I try not to miss things but sometimes I do so uh, if you think a question has been missed type something into it like don't forget this and and then it'll appear back up at the top of the group okay my question is in Matthew chapter 7 uh, I'm not sure the verse number where it says judge not lest you be judged and then it talks about the measure you meet out shall be measured back to you. I want to know what that uh, means, the measure you meet out. In Matthew 7, it says in verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured to you again. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly what God means by that. I, I do know that when he says, judge not, that ye be not judged, that that has to do with uh, an individual's spiritual condition. Because the child of God is uh, in submission to the will of God, and we know God is the judge. And we do not judge others in in because of that. Uh, we we leave judgment to God. There's one judge and lawgiver, and it's not us. So the true believer leaves judgment to God. That that's the spirit of uh, of God that is working within that person that God has saved to direct them, no, don't go into that area of judging that person, uh, of condemning them in any way. Uh, a true child of God is, is very sensitive about that. We, we do not want to uh, pronounce judgment because, well, because of the spirit that the Lord has given us and of his spirit indwelling us that that jealously protects um, that role for God himself. So, in, in other words, the true believer will not enter into a way of looking at people that is, that is judging them. Now, yes, he can sin in that area like any, any sin, uh, temporarily or momentarily, but God will correct them. And he will not continue in uh, a judgmental attitude towards others. And that's why it says, judge not that ye be not judged. Because it is typically the unsaved person that is judgmental of other people. That finds fault with others. That, that is very critical. That condemns other people. They have no uh, safeguards or they, they have uh, no spirit of God to hold them back. And, and so they will say, for instance, that that guy did me wrong. He, he did something to me five years ago. I'll never forgive him. That, that's the mindset of an unsafe person. Uh, they hold a grudge. They remember the wrong, the, the sin committed against them. They have pronounced the judgment. I'm never going to talk to them. I want nothing to do with that person. Uh, I'll never forgive them. You see, only an unsafe person can maintain that attitude. So judge not, because if you are someone who is able to be judgmental in that sense, to be the judge of your fellow man, then that's indicative that you yourself are not saved, and therefore you will be judged. And 
uh, will will be judged by the law of God. The law of God will judge us and find us guilty and condemn us and destroy us. So that's what verse one is saying. And so and and beginning of verse two, we can understand that. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And what judgment was it it was uh, a condemnation it, it was a lack of forgiveness we we would not forgive the other person for their wrong so God will not forgive us for our wrong a and we will experience that type of condemnation but thank you for calling and sharing and if anyone else has a question or a comment that you'd like to make and you've already entered into the uh, phone conference, all you have to do is hit star six on your phone and that will serve to raise your hand. Um, here's a question from Pal Talk. Could you please explain Revelation 11 verse 19? Let's turn to Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19 where it says, And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. There were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Well, this is taking place, if we go back to verse 15 of Revelation 11, when the seventh angel sounds, and, and the seventh angel sounding, uh, is uh, simultaneous with the third woe. And all three woes, the last three trumpets, identify with Judgment Day, and it's describing the unfolding of Judgment Day as um, Christ takes the kingdom from Satan, and we know that Judgment Day is a prolonged period of time. Well, in verse 19, the temple of God is open, and they're seen in the temple the Ark of His Testament. The Ark is a figure of Christ, and, and Christ is in heaven, and the lightning and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail, five things are listed. Each one identifies with the wrath of God, and the number five points to atonement, and Judgment Day is the time that the unsaved are making an atonement for their sin. Just as Christ died in making atonement or payment for the sins of his people, the unsaved have sinned. They bear their own sin, so each unsaved individual is experiencing the wrath of God, the punishment of for their own sin, they are really offering up themselves or being offered as payment for their sins, their transgressions. And so God, in uh, punishing them and finally destroying them, is receiving payment for the transgression of his law. Now the problem, the terrible problem, that the unsaved individual has is when he has to make atonement himself or herself for their own sin that there's no way to return from death there's there's no coming back from it no rising from it as Christ did because uh, Jesus was Almighty God and God the Father resurrected him and he rose from the dead there will be no resurrection of all the unsaved and that's why they're destroyed forevermore and are annihilated because the, the law has finally been satisfied all their sins are paid for upon the point of their death but again they have no power in that day to deliver themselves and, and to come back to life. But thank you for 
sharing that verse and for your question. And we do have um, another question from Pal Talk. The question is, may I, may I ask, since the topic came up, what online KJV Bible do you recommend? I use the eSword and find it works very well with also having the concordance. Thank you. Well, uh, again, um, even though, you know, we're e-Bible Fellowship, Electronic Bible Fellowship, I, I really don't use electronic tools all that much as far as Bibles or concordances. or I, I know there are programs like eSword, and some people um, are able to utilize them very well and are very comfortable with them and they have search programs uh, where you can have the King James Bible and if you want to look up a word it can it can show you where the Strong's word is found I, I understand that but I never really developed uh, a habit of going online I I guess I'm more traditional and I just like the feel of books the, the Bible and I have the concordance and other Bible help books uh, right here and I, I just turn to them you know even though uh, programs online programs are very helpful I think for me that it aids me to go through the process of turning pages and and, and a slower process of comparing scripture and looking up words uh, because during that time your the mind is working and and you know you're dwelling on the last verse you just looked at as you're trying to find the next verse and and uh, sometimes you go to verses that that really are not helpful but still you read them and and all that is helpful uh, over the long term in learning the Bible and that's the ultimate goal for each child of God is to learn the Bible because the more we learn about the Bible the more we learn about Christ and the more strengthened and encouraged and comforted we are and and the more we're growing in grace and knowledge of God so yes uh, I know these ways are faster they're quicker and, and sometimes uh, that can be helpful, but I I prefer uh, to slow it down a little bit and, and to use the books. So I really don't use um, those things. The only thing that I do use is um, there's some site, I think it's kjv1611.com, um, that has the Bible online and, and on Facebook when... Uh, responding to text questions I, I give verses so I'll copy and paste from that site and and post it uh, that's about the only thing I, I use but thank you for your question okay let's go to the next person on the phone welcome to our question and answer program please go ahead with your call oh uh, yeah Chris uh, good program crisis King of Kings, could you please tell me, are you going to get, or hopefully get someone to download these uh, Friday, Sunday, uh, Monday through Friday Bible studies uh, on YouTube and on the Bible Fellowship? I know you're working at it, but uh, a lot of times they can't get it. Like last Sunday's question and answers never came through the email, but I get the studies, which are very good. And, Anyway, again, I'm just asking, you know, are you still working on that? Yes. Um, I believe that Genesis Chapter 9 was added to the website. Um, Bill was still working on adding the ad additional chapters of Genesis. And we have made some progress with YouTube. Um, I think all the question and answers, or, or many of them from the year 2015, have been added. Uh, we would like to to get uh, the Q and A's from 2016, or maybe it was 2016. 
but but there is progress there, and we're hoping to uh, get caught up eventually. But thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Uh, I was just wondering if you were considering having another day in the word at the uh, same place. Well, um, uh, you know, let's say it's all, uh, it, we're about mid February. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we probably should. Yes, I, th I think we will try. We'll, we'll see if we can get that place. Um, we haven't found anything else uh, or any other location as yet, so uh, we, we probably will try to return to the hall that we were at last time. Okay, thank you for calling and sharing, and let's go to the next person. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, my question is about um, the finished work at the foundation that was Hebrews, that the, all the works were finished? Yes, Hebrews 4, verse 3. 4, 3. Okay. Now, uh, can we say that all the works were completed at the foundation uh, of Jehovah in the person of, or Christ in the person of Melchizedek and in the name of Melchizedek, uh, whatever had to be accomplished and finished, they were all done because not discounting the work of Christ because remembering that Jesus Christ said his father always works, so does he. And um, he said he came to finish the work that he was sent to, to finish. So can you explain? Yeah, yeah, that's so, a good question. It's a very good question. In Hebrews 9, or excuse me, Hebrews 4, I'll read the verse in verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as they have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And the works in view here are the work of atonement, the work of Christ um, taking upon himself the sins of all his elect people, everyone that he would save, and dying for them and making payment for them and then rising up from the dead. All those works were finished from the foundation of the world, guaranteeing the salvation of everyone who Christ died for, everyone whose name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, what does it mean then when we read in John, in John 9, verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sin, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. And um, what what is what is that saying? Well, the atonement, the payment for sins, that particular work was completely finished from the foundation of the world. And never again would there be a need for Christ to offer um, himself in payment for sin. God determined to send Jesus to demonstrate those things, but that's a different matter. But still, there had to be a carrying out of the application of that finished work or, or of the blood of the slain lamb. There had to be an application, the applying of Christ's blood to each individual child of God all throughout the history of the world or until God completed his salvation program. And so Christ came 
to work the works of him that sent him. And what is that work? John 6, verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Belief or faith, correct or right faith or belief, comes as a result of the salvation of God and the fruit of the Spirit. And, and so Christ accomplished the work of saving sinners, of the sending forth of his gospel, the application of the word of God, and then they would have the blood of Christ applied to their souls and become born again. So there is two different kinds of work that's in view. Again, at the foundation of the world, it's the work of atonement or payment for sin. And the work that, that Christ performs through his body, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring tidings of good news, that work, uh, the evangelism program that God established, went on for thousands of years until finally it, it was uh, finished or completed with the outpouring of the latter rain and the saving of the great multitude just prior to May 21, 2011. And, and so Christ had to work that work while it was day, the day of salvation, for the night cometh when no man, that's referring to Jesus himself, no man can work. And now we're presently living in the spiritual night the day of judgment in which Christ is not performing the work of salvation any longer. This is um, the work of God that ye believe. He's not performing that work any longer. He's not granting belief. He's not granting salvation in any way. And, and so when we look at God's gospel uh, program, we see at the foundation of the world the all important payment for sins was finished and then by May 21, 2011 the uh, applying of that that payment that Christ made the the applying of the blood uh, as the word of God was like hyssop dipped into the basin and would be applied to each one chosen predestinated to receive it then finally the last soul had the application applied before may 21 2011 and it's as though the basin full of that shed blood of christ became dry there, there was no more blood to be applied to any more sinners and and so that's of course the uh, the a grievous thing today as far as God's elector concern and the unsaved are concerned the, uh, even if we desired to and wanted to and we would we we would want to when we go to the basin of blood there is no more blood because there are no more names to be reached no more lost sheep that must be found it, uh, we could use many uh, different figures of speech to say the same thing God completed that aspect of his salvation program and and now we're living in a time when all these things are past the Lord's predestinating certain ones past the before the foundation of the world Christ paying for their sins well in the past at the point of the foundation of the world. The application process or the evangelization of the world in order to reach everyone named in the Lamb's book now passed. It's all behind us and that's why when we pray, we pray acknowledging that O oh Lord, having had mercy in, in selecting your people and making payment for their sins and in applying 
your word to their hearts. All past now, having had mercy, have mercy, because we don't know if maybe this person or that person may have been um, predestinated, may have been an individual who you, um, you died for at the foundation of the world, and may have been someone you did apply the blood to before ending your salvation program. And, and so we, we pray along those lines, hoping, well, could it be that this is one of your elect? But thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to our last call tonight. Welcome to our Friday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Mr. McCann, could I ask two questions about two different lessons? Do I well, let, to do let's, that? let's um, start with the first one and see how that goes. Okay. Um, the, the lesson on Sunday where we were uh, comparing the circumcision um, and we were running the, the law of God <laughs> that the child must be circumcised on the eighth day, and we ran our seven uh, uh, seven thousand years from uh, forty nine ninety the flood of Noah's day. What what made us tie in to have that be our start date, the Noah flood? Well, yeah, that, that's a good question. the The reason is that God gives a seven day figure in the flood account that we have understood correctly relates to a 7,000 year period and it's sort of at that point or um, at the point of the flood and and all the time that's been since then that covers for the most part God's day of salvation the the it covers um, much Old Testament history the New Testament church age it covers the uh, latter rain period of the Great Tribulation, and overwhelmingly all those that God would save would be saved in this space of 7,000 years. Yes, there were some, a handful, uh, we, we know Abel was saved, and, and maybe a couple of other individuals before Noah. Then we know Noah and his family were saved and, and delivered, from the flood and and so really how many people do we have we we have maybe a dozen or a, a, let's say a hundred it, it's hardly any in comparison to the rest that God saved in the next 7,000 year segment and especially if um, as the Bible indicates in in some places there's a number as great as 200 million there's just no comparison. So from that point of the flood date of 4990, and that one day is a thousand year period of 7,000 years, we have overwhelmingly the vast majority of people to be saved or to be circumcised are being um, spiritually circumcised at that time. And then we also have the end of God's salvation program and the beginning of a spiritual eighth day because seven days or 7,000 years would complete the week as it were and as soon as we we get past May 21, 2011 we're in day one of the next millennium as 7,000 and one day is really counting towards 8,000 and so uh, we, we can look at that two different ways it could be the completion of the millennial week and the eighth day uh, when when we complete seven days it, it starts on Sunday and it goes through Saturday and the conclusion of Saturday is the end of the seventh day and the eighth day is Sunday and Sunday is a resurrection day as the Lord uh, Jesus rose early Sunday morning and, and so again we we have the eighth day identifying with resurrection and we have the eighth day identifying with 
circumcision and anyone not circumcised is to be cut off it, it just fits really very well there there, uh, yes, it, there, there might be some imperfections in, in the type that God is using, but uh, it, it's almost impossible to get uh, a typology that, you know, answers every single question, but, but this answers many of them. Thank you. And do I have time for my other one? Yes, please, go ahead. Um, I understand that David's death in 967 B.C., also was a date for the laying of the physical temple and that there was a thousand years it would run to 33 AD uh, which would uh, be the, the Christ's physical death and the typifying of uh, his uh, at the beginning of the world the foundation of his spiritual house when we do the 3,000 years that runs between 967 the, the foundation of the physical temple to 2033 are we to consider Revelation 19, the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, the bride, as as the foundation of the true spiritual house of God? Is is that how we're to look at that 3,000 years from foundation to foundation? Well, when Christ died, the Bible says at the foundation of the world, he was the lamb slain at the foundation of the world. The works were finished at the foundation of the world. I used to think, and I think some others um, have thought this way and may still think this way, that it means that right before God created the world, it, it, you know, we, we understand 11,013 B.C. is the creation year, and, and it's almost as though, well, Christ died as the Lamb, um, and, and then God, the next instant, if you can have an instant in eternity, the next instant created the world, and and that death of Christ was the foundation for this world. Well, the death of Christ was the foundation for this world, but it happened in eternity past. Any point before this world began is eternity past, and and we can't think of eternity past uh, in relationship to time. There, there is not a moment before the world began, but there is eternity past before the world began, because there is no time as we understand it. And, and so upon the death of Christ, when he died and rose from the dead, that, form, that death and resurrection formed the basis of, of the creation for this present world and for the world to come. In other words, the, the death and resurrection of Christ itself is the foundation. It, it's, uh, it, it's not um, however long, it, whether it was eons into eternity past, whenever it occurred in that eternal past, that was the basis for God later creating this world, allowing history to unfold, accomplishing his salvation program, and then destroying this world and creating the next world that, that new heaven and new earth is also built upon the foundation of the death and resurrection of Christ in eternity past. And so when we see time relationships that connect uh, like the foundation of the temple in 967 B.C., we do see a thousand years to Christ going to the cross to demonstrate his death at the foundation of the world. And then we see 3,000 calendar years until a year like 2033, which may be the fulfillment of of the second coming of Christ, the completion of Judgment Day, and the bringing in of the new heaven and new earth. It, it's all built upon, it's all related to the, the atoning work of the Lord Jesus at the point of the foundation of the world. You know, sometimes uh, the, the numbers 
have relationship to that and and we don't fully understand it, it it's just um, we we do see the connection that leads us back to that atoning work that the Lord performed and finished at the foundation of the world but thank you for calling and sharing your questions and in the Bible verses and I would like to thank everyone for joining us tonight and for asking your questions and and making your comments and especially for bringing certain scriptures to our attention so that we could consider them and look into them it is always profitable it is always a blessing when we spend time focusing on the Word of God but we have come to the end of our time tonight uh, please if you can join us this coming Sunday afternoon Lord willing for another question and answer program but for now good night and may the Lord's perfect will be done and thank you for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's questions and answers time with your speaker Chris McCann you can join us for these questions and answers sessions Sunday afternoons following the Sunday studies and certain weeknights following the Monday through Friday studies check eBibleFellowship.com for the current schedule until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.